I'm going to show you how you can instantly trigger an NA10 workflow from a Slack message. So the first thing we will actually need to do is we need to go over to back over to our personal here and we can just click on save for now for the Slack agent and we actually want to create some new credentials. So we click on create credential and let me just move myself over here. We want to search for Slack. So we want to, first of all, use the Slack OAuth2 API, click on continue. And we want to connect to my account. Then you can just say allow once this becomes green. There we go, click on allow. And we'll just call this Slack uh, OAuth uh, demo and click on save. There we go. Then what you want to do is you want to head over to api.slack.com slash apps. I will uh, leave a link for this in the description. If you want to create a new app, you first need to log into your account and click on your apps. And then you need to create a new app from scratch. And we will call this NAN tutorial. There we go. And we want to select the workspace we want to use. Click on create app. Let me just turn on my camera again. So in here, we want to click on OAuth and permissions. And we can scroll down to the scopes and we want to click on add an OAuth scope under bot token scopes because we want to use a bot. We want to add app mentions read and we want to add one called channel history. We want to add a scope called channels read, channels read. And we want to add a scope called chat writes. And we want to call a, want to add a scope called groups read. And we want to add a scope called assistant writes. There we go. So now I can scroll back up to install to your workspace. Click the and click on that button. And then I need to click on allow. And then we want to copy this bot user OAuth token. And then we want to go back over to NHN and we click on uh, create a new credential. And we will want to call this Slack API. Now we can use the Slack API, click on continue, and then paste this access token in here. Click on save, or we can call this, uh, actually we can call this Slack API. So we have separated those, demo, click on save. And now we just need to make sure that our Slack OAuth demo is up to date. So we just need to click on reconnect here and we just can connect the account again by selecting allow here once it turns green. There we go. And there we go. Okay, so now we can head back over to our Slack app and we want to click on app home here on the left. And we want to basically allow always show my bot online, allow that, and then allow this home tab and also allow users to send slash commands and messages from the chat tab. So once we've done that, we can just come back over to our, what you can now see is we have now have our uh, app here, which is called NSN tutorial. And we can now send this guy a message and say, hey there. And as you can see, our bot is not yet set up to respond to this message. So it does not know how to do so. So what we can do now is we can head back over to our NSN and we can go over to overview. And we want to continue the Slack agent that we started on earlier where we have not done anything in the workflow yet. So you can click on add first step. And in here, we want to add a Slack trigger. We can just say Slack and then on any event. And what we want to do now is we want to connect to our uh, Slack API demo. And we want to add the webhook URLs. We wanted to watch for the whole workspace but we want to test this webhook URL. So if we copy this now and we click on test step, we can come back to our Slack API app. We can click on event subscriptions. And then we want to enable events and we want to paste our URL in here like so. And then you can see that the request URL is verified. So now we want to verify the uh, production URL because that is the one we're going to use once we have uh, we can stop listening to that now. And then we want to use the production URL. We can copy that and we can go out of this node here and we can click on the save or we can set this to active first. Got it. And then click on save. Now it is saved. 
Now we come, come back over to our Slack API here uh, and we can click on change and we can add this new URL. We can verify that. As you can see, it's now verified. So what we now can do is we can come back over to our uh, Slack here and we can say add a channel. We want to create a new channel and we just want a blank channel and we want to call this channel Slack or we can call it NFN but we can have that set as public and click on create. And then we want to add our NFN bot, which was called uh, NFN tutorial. So we can just say at an NFN tutorial. There we go. And then we want to say add to channel. So now I can head back over to our NFN workflow. And we can now change this to be not on any events, but on uh, bot app mention. Bot app mention. There we go. And we want to search for the NFN bot. And then we can click out of this node here and we can click on save. Once we've done that, we can come back over to our Slack channel and we can try to add this bot here, right? NFN tutorial. We can say, hey there, send that message. Now I can come back over to our Slack agent here and we can find the workflow history. So I just realized I just forgot to do one thing inside the Slack API here. You want to come over uh, in, in the event subscriptions, you want to underneath the enable events, you want to click on the subscribe to bot events. Then you want to click on add bot user event and then add the app mention as you can see here and then click on save changes. And now you can come back to your, uh, your Slack here and you can again add the bot you just made and just say whatever test or something. And then you can come back over to your uh, init and workflow and you can click on executions. And now you will have this execution right here. So what we can do with this execution is now we can actually get this text by using a uh, text execution, execution data. There we go. Then you can make sure it is saved and we can now go over to our Slack bot again and we can just say, hey there, enter that and now we will be able to see inside our executions here we'll be able to see this execution right here as you can see it has now received the item and the input was here and the output is like this where we have the text and saying hey there now what you can do to actually make this uh, to actually use this data you get from the slack trigger and the execution data later down the line in like a AI prompt or whatever, you can actually come over to the Slack trigger here. You can click on the webhook URLs. You can copy this webhook URL. And then you can uh, just click on this button to make it inactive. And then we can try to test this step by clicking test step. Then you can go back over to your Slack app here and you need to uh, basically retry with another URL. So you can just paste your new URL in here and then click on save changes once it is verified. Then what you can do is you can come back over to your Slack uh, bot here and you can just say like this, hey there, enter. And as you can see inside of our um, NFT, now we have the output, which you can then pin. And once that is pinned, you can basically run each of the next nodes just by saying test step. And there we go. Now we have the data from execution data and now we can add another AI node or whatever you, you want to basically make a prompt and send it back to Slack or whatever. And to make this go back to production, then you obviously want to click on this button here and then you want to copy the production URL you had uh, inside of the webhook URLs here, and then just head back over to your app and then make this the production URL and then click on save changes and you are good to go. If you found this helpful, please make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.